Let's get into the brain science of panic. So understanding the neurobiology of panic can help demystify these frightening experiences because they are, like I said, super, super terrifying. Panic attacks involve your brain's threat detection system. This is your brain. This is your prefrontal cortex. This is the threat detection system. And it particularly involves your amygdala, which acts as your brain's alarm. When this alarm system becomes oversensitive, it can misinterpret normal bodily sensations as dangerous. Your brain goes, what? For example, a slight increase in heart rate that would normally go unnoticed might be interpreted as a sign of imminent danger, triggering a cascade of physiological responses designed to protect you. Your body releases stress hormones like adrenaline, which causes physical symptoms like racing heart and rapid breathing and heightened alertness. These are normal responses to danger, but in a panic attack, they occur when there's no actual threat. Temptation Island, chilling on the couch, eating boom chicka pop. What's important to understand is that this system isn't broken. You and your brain are not broken. You're doing exactly what you're designed to do. Your brain is just trying to protect you. It's just being triggered inappropriately. The good news is that we can retrain this system through therapeutic approaches, evidence-based therapeutic approaches. Okay, so panic attacks, as we know, are intensely personal experiences. But remember, you're not alone. Research from World Mental Health Surveys found about 13.2% of people will experience a panic attack at some point in their lives, while approximately 1.7% develop panic disorder. Even I have experienced a panic attack, and I'm a trained mental health clinician who trains people how to have panic attacks. While panic attacks feel catastrophic in the moment, they are highly treatable with professional help. Studies have shown that treatments like exposure therapy, which is a very specific type of cognitive behavior,